Hello, everyone. Welcome to our May Colin show, May 18th, 2022. We are going to get started right at three o'clock Eastern. Our friend Mike Sissy from FMC is going to kick us off at three, but welcome, everybody. We're going to get started here in about four minutes. Thank you. If you're just joining us, as a reminder, um, you can submit questions via the chat. We didn't get to submit a question ahead of time. We are going to get started just in a minute here and wait till three o'clock Eastern for Mike to kick us off. Welcome and thanks for being here. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's just about three o'clock Eastern. Thank you for joining us for the latest edition of the Grunder Experience brought to you by FMC and the FMC True Champions Program. Again, I'm Mike Sisti, North America Marketing Manager for FMC, and we're excited today with our next installment. Uh, Marty's topic today is add-on services, quality control, and hitting your goals. So we've got some great questions tuned up for the end of this chat and uh, looking forward to Marty's discussion. So with that, I'll pass this over to Vince, uh, the Grow Group. Vince, take it away. No, thanks, Mike. We appreciate you organizing these and putting these together. We love the partnership that we've got with FMC. Mike, we were just talking about this. We did our first call-in show a year ago this May. It's mm -hmm. been super fun to do these Grunder Experience shows. And uh, we thank you for all the support that you give us. So before we get into it, um, I do want to go through a couple of logistics for everybody. If they haven't maybe been through one of the call-in shows that we've done before, as a reminder, if everybody listening, you get a copy of the session that's recorded today. This lives on the True Champion site brought to you by FMC. So again, if there's anything we talk about, anything you want to revisit, see, share with your team. Um, we love when people are on live. Um, but we know it's May and you can access this whenever you need to. So it'll live on the True Champion site. 
Um, if you do have questions, as I mentioned, that you didn't get to submit ahead of time for Marty, you can certainly drop them in the chat. Um, if we have time at the end of the uh, questions that have been submitted previously, we'll move to the ones that are in the chat. Uh, you don't have to wait and hold the question until the end. Whenever the question comes to you, you can put it right in the chat here on Zoom and uh, I'll monitor those and we can grab them at the end. And then as always, if you have any regional market specific or questions for FMC and the products that they have relating to your uh, lawn care program, please uh, drop it in the chat and Mike and I can help get you to a, a local market specialist from FMC in your area. So um, again, if you're new to this and you don't know who Marty Grunder or Vince Torchy is or what the Grow Group does, I just want to take a minute and introduce ourselves. We are a leading, industry, leading green industry consultancy. Um, we provide three things really. Number one, innovative programming and online training, similar to what we are doing here today. We offer virtual events. We do um, in-person events. We're all about you know, training leaders and, and uh, their team for landscaping and green industry companies. We do offer peer groups um, that are set up all over the country based on your revenue size, how many team members you have in your mix of business. And we offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. But the biggest thing that the Grow Group provides to these green industry companies as real world resources to help owners and their teams succeed. Where do we get these resources? We get them from Grunder Landscaping Company, the company that Marty Grunder, who I'm gonna turn it over to in a minute, founded as when he was a teenager at a way, as a way to make money for college. Hard to believe Marty, you're celebrating your 39th year in business, almost 40 years running Grunder Landscaping Company. Uh, great picture of you and your brother uh, with your nice shorts on and your red pickup truck. I don't know how many times you hired and fired Rich that summer, but it was probably a good summer. 47. <laughs> probably good that Rich is out in Seattle now doing his own thing and you got to carry Grunder on, but a very cool thing to almost be celebrating 40 years in business now. Grunder Landscaping with over 60 team members, over 60 industry awards. Um, Grunder Landscaping, if you're not familiar, is in Southwest Ohio. We are focused on that high-end residential market or a full service company that does lawn care, snow, mowing, maintenance, land keeping, construction, install, um, all the above for our, for our customers and clients in Southwest Ohio. And finally, before I turn it over to Marty, just in case you were wondering, Grunder is the leading landscaping company in that market. So Grunder has known what it's taken to get to be number one and then stay at the top. So as I mentioned, Grunder Landscaping Company is really where we get all the content that we share uh, for all of our clients at the Grow Group. So we refer to them as our living lab. And today we're going to share with you how Grunder Landscaping Company has gotten through their selling season, um, what Marty and the team have done for add-on services. And then we're going to end with a little bit of a recipe on how you can stay successful for the rest of 2022. And we'll take some questions. So Marty, without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to you. Thank you, Vince. Uh, always a pleasure being with the fine folks from FMC and Mike and his team. Uh, it seems like we've been working with FMC for 10 years, not, not one year. <laughs> It's been a very enjoyable partnership. I think, Vince, what's making it really enjoyable right now, uh, Mike and his team are a wealth of resources for lawn care professionals. And as you know, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but we've started our own lawn care company, which we're going to talk to you about. So, um, you know, even though it's my 40, almost 40th year in business, I'm excited about the business. I'm just excited, as excited today as I was 39 years ago. We're growing. Um, and it's fun. And, and one of the best ways to grow a business, folks, is to sell more to your existing clients. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, how can you sell add-ons? Uh, how can you stay on top of your business so that you can grow through quality control? And, and what can Marty and Vince share with you today that will help you make sure that your 2022 is successful? So Vince is a very humble guy. He spends a tremendous amount of his time working with our clients now. He's been running alongside me for 11 years. He's responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the business, and he works with hundreds, literally hundreds, of landscaping companies on an annual basis. So we have a lot of experience to share. So I'll be calling on Vince as we go along here for him to add a little bit more color on some of the ideas that I'm sharing. So let's talk about present day. Right now we're in May, right? It's right in the middle of spring. It's the 100 days of hell, as some people would call it. A couple of years ago, our friend Jeffrey Johns, a very successful contractor in coastal on coastal Georgia said, Marty, I don't like the 100 days of hell. I don't like the reference. We refer to it as the 100 days of victory. And right when he said that, Vince, I mean, I, both you and I were like, right. we're positive people. That's how we should be referring to it as the 100 yep. days of victory, that we get this opportunity to have our businesses just go crazy, no matter what the economy is doing or anything else, you're going to have a spring. So we're right in the middle of all that, folks, racing towards July 4th, which is kind of where 
Um, you know, now the last couple of years, I don't know about you, but at Grunder and at our entities here and at the majority of the companies we work with, they're not really seeing a, a slowdown. At some point, it's going to slow down. But business here at Grunder and, and with the majority of our clients in the Grow Group, I would refer to as incredible. Uh, the demand and the amount of work that we have been doing nonstop now for two years has really, it's been a blessing. Um, it's been challenging. Uh, but it's been a good thing. So I think it's important that we not lose perspective and be grateful for what we have. Uh, I know that many of you LCOs are through your selling season uh, to some extent. Um, it's a little bit harder right now. What we're finding is we learn more about having our own lawn care division, about when is the timing to sell that. So most of you are through that rush. People have picked their contractor and, and now you're looking for ways to do add-ons. So that's what we want to talk to you about today. Uh, lawn care has been our best add-on service, folks. Um, there's a picture of our rig um, that we have set up that handles our lawn care. Eventually, that rig will enable us to do uh, lawn care, perimeter pest control, mosquito fogging, um, and it enables us to keep the product uh, inside the truck and out of the weather, sun off of the herbicides. Um, it looks good. Um, this, is, this is our prototypical rig that we're going to use going forward. You're going to learn more about Grunder Green, which is what we've named that company, um, and how we did that at, at a later time. But, but add-ons, ladies and gentlemen, are such a great thing for your existing business. Um, you know, Vince, you've seen what we've done with add-ons at the landscaping company. Um, I think you got to be careful. There is a tipping point where an add-on service doesn't make sense. Um, if you're in the lawn care business, I don't know that it makes sense to have an add-on service of building a deck or doing elect electrical work or doing plumbing. Um, we've got to be picking add-on services that make sense. So the, the six ones that of, of the many ones that, that we think you should be looking at if you're not already, uh, now's the time to be pushing really hard on these. Um, ticks are a big thing. <laughs> We had uh, a bridal shower at our house uh, last week. So that meant my daughter from Pittsburgh came in. My daughter from Nashville, Tennessee, who's getting married, came in. My daughter from Cincinnati came in. And when my daughter from Cincinnati, they all have dogs too. So they all brought the dogs over. Well, my daughter gets back to her house in Cincinnati and she says they found a tick on their dog. And she said, so we might want to check the yard. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I had treated the lawn uh, for ticks, so I don't think it's our lawn. I told her, you probably ought to treat your lawn. <laughs> I just bring it up because those, those are things that people don't think about, okay? They're, they may not think on their own, oh, I might have ticks. Um, you know, I, I better do a spray treatment. You have to suggest that to them. The same thing with mosquitoes, Okay grubs. You're the expert. These are the things that are lying out there that it's incumbent upon you to make a suggestion. When I go to my doctor, Dr. Davis, and I see him, I don't expect to find out a month later that there is this new blood test that he could have done that can help be a, an indicator of cancer. There's, there's new tests out. The last time I was in to see Dr. Nick four months ago, he said, hey, there's a new test. It's $125. I really think you ought to do it. Um, it's getting better and better. It can. It, it, it just makes sense to try it. Would you like to try it? Well, of course I want to try it. I, I want to stay healthy. I'm 54 years old. I, I want to live a lot longer than, than 60. I, I, I want to live to 90 and be able to bend over and pick up a golf ball or, or play with my children. So when we present these add-ons, we have to present them in such a way that that it is going to make sense for them very clearly as to what the benefits are to having them. A tick spray, a mosquito spray, a grub spray, um, tree and shrub, what that can do. Um, at the one of the country clubs that we maintain here in Dayton, Ohio, when we took the property over about 25 years ago, they had about 25 flowering crabs that go right on the main approach going into the clubhouse. And they wanted us to tear them out because they didn't look good and they wanted to put new ones in. Well, we quickly realized that with some cover sprays, we could get the apple scab on them controlled and we wouldn't have to tear any of them out. You ought to see what those trees look like this spring after us doing those preventative treatments. Obviously weed control, obviously aeration and overseeding. Um, Add-on sales become very, very important and it's the positioning of them and how you present them. 
Vince, what color could you add on to the add-on sales? No, Marty, if you want to flip through, I can kind of walk through really why Grunders even looked at add-on sales and why everyone that we're talking to today should. Because number one, you can add them efficiently to your business, right? You've already got your existing client base. You've got team members. You've got products you can already serve. It's not like, as Marty said, we're going to all of a sudden start maybe a decking company or an electric company. Maybe we don't really have those skills, but if we've got someone already spraying lawns, we can probably transfer that into somebody for spraying for ticks, mosquitoes, whatever else the case may be. So we can add them efficiently, right? Number two, a lot of these services, Marty, are high margin services to add, right? They're not so complicated. We're already on the property. We're already visiting them. Of course, chemicals and uh, fertilizer, et cetera, has gone up in price this year. We're passing that along to our customers for the most part, but these are great high margin business for people to be in. And then finally, Marty, one thing I want to add is not only these add-on services great for your company and good for your clients, also a great way to give new members of your team opportunities. If you've had a number two or a number three spray tech who wants more to do, and maybe we're not growing lawn care as fast as we thought, but we can take add-ons, maybe they can become your expert in one of the add-on services, right, Marty? And there's Plenty of time for us to talk about uh, Brian Davis right at some point with Grunder Green, but that's where, you know, this started with Brian. Brian was a crew member at Grunder Landscaping Company to start. We were looking at add-ons. Brian was a really talented guy. We realized, hey, Brian can probably run Grunder Green, right? It's good for our clients, new service to offer, good for Grunder Landscaping Company, lawn care is high margin and great for Brian to be able to have his own identity and go out there and work. So Marty, there's not just customer reasons, there's internal reasons why these add-ons are great as well. So the business case for Grunder Green, I went back to the slide with the truck. We had three different subcontractors on about 180 of our 220 maintenance accounts that we have in the Dayton region. And on those 180 of the 220 accounts, we had a lawn care subcontractor, we had a plant health care subcontractor, and we had a perimeter pest control subcontractor. Now, we're not doing the plant health care and the perimeter pest control, and I alluded to this when we started here just yet, but eventually, and that should start, um, we're going live with all this stuff July 1st. By the end of the year, we will be doing those products. So when this Grunder Green truck pulls up on a 12,000 square foot lawn or whatever square foot lawn you want to pick, instead of them just doing a $120 lawn app, they're now doing a $120 lawn app, a $280 uh could be a spray for uh, mites. It, it could be a spray for spittle bugs. It could be for leaf rollers on boxwoods. Um, it could be a treatment for who knows what uh, for $280. So now we got the 120 for the lawn, the 60 for the perimeter pest, and the 280 for the plant healthcare stop. So we turn a $120 stop into as much as a $500 stop, all done with the same truck on there. Now I understand that that makes it difficult. You may be just starting, um, maybe the thought of, because this is not an inexpensive truck that we bought, maybe that scares you, but I would encourage you, we've had some people look at this truck and they said, man, you're crazy, we could never do that. And then I showed them the business case as to why we did this truck and why this makes sense. And, it, and truly folks, it makes sense. So the add-ons to what Vince said, the way he characterized that, he's absolutely right. And oftentimes when we look at growing our business, we think more clients and I am not saying that you shouldn't go get more clients. But what we're here to tell you today is, are you selling everything you can to your existing client base? What, what organization or industry in America does this better than anybody else? I'd say a grocery store. Last time you went into Kroger's, are the aisles barren when you walk up to the, to the belt? Is there nothing there but the belt that you put everything in your cart? No, there's all kinds of things. There's the Tide pen to, that you wouldn't think to buy up. There's batteries, there's gum, there's a magazine, there's, a he, there's headphones, there's a travel pack of Q-tips, there's a gift card, there's a, 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 a happy birthday card. There's all those things that become impulse purchases that make sense. Now, we have to take that strategy, that creativity that retailers like Kroger's use, we got to back that off a bit, all right? I don't, I don't want your lawn care truck to be like the ice cream truck playing music through the neighborhood and you're selling all kinds of stuff out of that. That's not, that's not what we're talking about today. But we're talking about the services that maybe you're currently subbing out, all right? And, and so maybe what we're trying to do more than anything is to give you a courage to, to look at some of this and see what particular add-ons like this can do for your business and get set up in the right way. Vince, anything else on add-ons before we move on to quality control? 
Yeah, Marty, I'll just briefly mention it. You mentioned it before, but these are one of those things that you are the expert. And if you're not bringing these things up to your clients and customers, you kind of have a window for competitors to do that. What if a competitor is across the street and they see the same disease in your yard as the one they're treating and they walk over and they say, hey, Mr. Grunder, I noticed that you've got this disease coming. Do you have anybody treating this? I'm treating it at the lawn across the street. Well, why didn't my lawn care guy bring that up, right? So exactly. again, this is not just a time for you to upsell your existing clients, but it's to be an expert. And if you don't, other people will. So again, pointing out problems to your client's solution is a win-win. Do not be afraid to add these add-ons. Now that you're through the majority of your primary selling season, it's a great way to do it. And Marty, we better be delivering on what we sold, right? So why don't we talk through some quality control? Well, quality control becomes a very, very important part of this because if we are just growing to grow, we're going to run into quality problems. We've got to be thoughtful of this. Um, one of the more amazing businesses that I have seen are restaurants in New York City that don't even have a sign out for their restaurant and people <laughs> find out about it. Vince, why do people find out about it and go there? Because the food is good. <laughs> All right. Now, I don't know if right. you could pull that off in Dayton, Ohio. I, if I ever win the lottery, I'm going to try it. I, I'm, I'm going to have this awesome restaurant in like a warehouse in the middle of nowhere and see if I can get anybody to come because I think I could because I think if the food's good and the service is good, people would come. So quality has to be something that you're thinking of all the time. And look, folks, those of you that are on with us today that maybe have followed us for a while, or maybe you've seen me speak, or you read our column, or you get our weekly great idea, or God love you, maybe you've been to our annual conference grow, you know I'm known for simplistic ideas. And I'll share with you right now my number one all-time best marketing idea. Here it is, all right? I'm going to whisper it so no one else hears. Do good work. Do good work. All right. When you do a quality job, you sell the next job. When your lawn is so green and luscious and weed free, there is no better calling card for your company than that. And since we're through the selling season, I think it's time that you make sure that you delivered on your promises, like Vince said. Are you having conversations about quality? I texted one of our longtime clients yesterday and I asked him how he was doing. Is everything OK? Is he happy? Has Grunder Landscaping Company and now Grunder Green has grown, I can't physically be on every property. So mm -hmm. I take about five to 10 clients a month and I either text them, email them, or call them. It depends on the relationship I have with them. And I ask them if everything's okay. Well, one of my best clients, he's, he's texted me back. He said, Marty, as usual, your team's on it. Um, I talked to Kent yesterday. There's some brown spots in my yard. And he's sending me pictures and I'm like, I, the pictures looked bad. And he had like gone into the brown spots and zoomed into this brown spot. And I couldn't tell if the brown spot was this big or like this big. Right. So I, I got his text and I drove right on over there and I FaceTimed him from the lawn and he could see me walking on the lawn, talking to him. He was blown away that I was in the lawn that fast and that I cared. When you do that, folks, you, you pretty much set yourself up where people give you some leeway and they know you care and you get on that. So Dave, my client, knows I care about quality. Are you having those conversations? Are you training your team? Are you working on all that? Are you ensuring that your clients are happy with the service that you've provided? Have you sent out a survey? Do you know your average retention rates? Vince and I were with a group of landscape professionals last week, and some of them had no idea what their retention rate was. That's like going to the Boston Red Sox game and not knowing what the score is. You don't do business like that. You have to get in a situation where you know what you're retaining. You know how you're doing. You know what your batting average. Vince, other comments on quality control before we move on to more. Yeah, Marty, it starts with, again, people on this call, owners and leaders of divisions and programs, you've got to be having quality conversations with your team to ensure that they understand how important this is. Nothing will kill reputation, especially for LCOs quicker than not delivering on what we have. We don't have a huge chance to stand out here. Hard to develop a relationship when you have hundreds of clients that are paying $50 for an application, right? You may not have the ability to connect with them all on an individual basis. So we better be ensure, ensuring that our quality is there. And as Marty already said, we can talk about surveys for a minute. Are, are you sending out surveys? If you're sending them out, are you checking on the ones that are negative? What are you doing with those, right? Are you responding to them? Is there a way that we can get clarification for those? Marty, as we've talked about, simplicity is the key to surveys as well. They've got to be 
less than five questions. Are you happy? Would you recommend us to a friend? Is there something going on in your property that you don't understand or like? Whatever it needs to be, but we've got to be able to capture that information, hopefully electronically, hopefully through SurveyMonkey or Real Green or whatever program or software you're using, so that you can have these survey results that you can use and make fact-based decisions on clients. Mike and I were talking and Mike had a great idea, great opportunity to do surveys is maybe after your aeration camp campaign, something you're doing maybe towards the end of the year. But if you just survey at the end of the year, you give yourself no ability to go back and correct any mistakes that you have. If you survey in October, November, right? If they're unhappy, you've already called on them for a renewal. Maybe you're calling on them at that time, probably not a good opportunity for you to get it. But if you're doing it in the middle of the year or the middle of spring and there's issues, maybe they're not even your fault. Maybe they're a client issue is really what it comes down to, but you have time to correct the problem, right? No difference than maintenance contracts or anything else that you're doing as a recurring service. When you're doing surveys, do them at a time where you can respond to them before the year turns over or the renewal turns over so you can correct the issue and get the contract for the following year. So again, do your surveys, keep them under five questions, collect the information and do them at a time where if something's wrong, you still got time in year to correct it. One of the things we're working on very hard at Grunder Green, um, after being in business 39 years, we now have our own lawn care division. We've had subs, we've had, a, we've had some very good subs, quite frankly, they've done great work for us. But there has been things that I have seen them do that I don't like. Uh, there's plenty of things I see them doing that I do like, but there have been things I see them do that I don't like. And we've tried to breed uh, that out of our organization. One of the things that drives me crazy is I go to a party or I go to a business lunch or I meet someone and they say, true green Kemlon killed my lawn. And I say, well, how did they kill, their, kill your lawn? Oh, well, look at it. I mean, they killed it. Well, listen, um, they put down a product, okay, but you're responsible for watering it and mowing it. And it doesn't appear to me that you did either one of those. Well, they didn't <laughs> tell me that. And, and so I think education has a lot to do with quality yeah. here. So we've got to be on top of this. And, and Mike is absolutely correct. In fact, when I saw that, I immediately told Brian, hey, let's make sure our survey gives us enough time to make it right before the end of the year, because that's so true. And oftentimes, smart your best customers are going to understand if you can present to them the science as to why their lawn's not green. Mrs. Jones, we have erred in not communicating this to you sooner, but if you don't get some water on this lawn soon, no matter what we do, it's not going to work. All right. Your blade is dull. You're cutting it too low. You're cutting it too frequent, too low. You're burning, you're, you're busting the crowns. You're, you can't do this. You can't remove that much of the turf and expect this turf to thrive. All those things. So again, just be mindful of all the things that go into that. And I think one of the ways, Vince, we do that with our peer groups when we have exercises, we ask everyone in our small group, we'll say, okay, you've moved to Naples, Florida, you've won the Florida lottery, you're building a new house, you're hiring a landscaper and a lawn care professional, what would you expect from them? What would just blow you out of your socks? And normally the answers to that, most of us come away thinking, we have some work to do to get anywhere close to what we could be doing. Yep. And yep. you got to find the fine line there because you can't like, well, I would, if they called me, I'd land a helicopter in their cul-de-sac to look at their, well, no, come on, you can't do that. All right. But couldn't you get technology in place that would notify them that you'll be out on Thursday to do their lawn? Well, yes, you could. Right. So we start thinking about that. And again, if clients are happy, it's a great time to add the sell-ons. When they're unhappy and they're mad and they're frustrated, that's not the time to say, look, I know you're, you're not very happy with us, which would you like to buy more? I mean, it, just, it doesn't work that way. Okay. So we, we've got to be Marty, we might've lost you here. Mike, can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you fine. And if you like, while we're getting Marty back, I could add on to that. Yeah, point. go for it, Mike. Go for it. So, you know, we're talking about doing these surveys, you know, uh, you know, post aeration as, as an example. But, uh, you know, one of the ways to get surveys out, even in advance, and kind of as a way of selling the aeration is one of the things I've done with all the companies that I've been associated with is doing a, um, a checkup on the lawn midsummer, the most stressful time of the year. 
So we we're following up midseason, and then that provides a, 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 an opportunity to really look for the hot spots, look for the problems, where are the thin spots. That's going to be the peak of the most stressful time of the of the year for the turf. Right. So what you're what you're actually doing is providing a a scorecard for them, and at the same time offering that recommendation, offering that add-on service at the same time. Then you're Not following right up with all those. So it's like a, you're, you're, you're proactively providing that survey for them. And then you're going to reach out to them, not only to go through that little checklist report, but also to say, hey, this might be an opportunity for aeration or seating or different things that you can do to improve the health of the lawn, not only for the fall, but for all of next year too. No, Mike, that's great. In fact, Marty, why don't you just jump off again and Mike and I will take it from here. How about that? Well, I, don't, I, think we had, I think we had a power outage here or something. Did it all go dark? Yeah, you're fine though. Mike hopped right on and we kept it rolling. So we're good. I, I, I'm sorry. There must have been a power surge here. We're in a commercial area and everything, there was a flash and I'd said, see you later. <laughs> maybe, maybe, no, God didn't, maybe God didn't like what I was saying about quality. I don't know. No, Marty, and you, Mike had a great point just about of the fact that it's just anytime you're communicating with a customer, right? It, it offers you an ability to whether it's ensure quality, have an add-on, talk about brown patches, whatever the case may be. But he had a good point. So Marty, you can jump back through. We'll get through our last session here and we'll yeah. take some questions. Mike makes me think of something funny somebody said one time, and it's more of a metaphorical analogy just for something. You know, when you're talking to your customers, who can't they be talking to? Right. And, and I realize that's a trite little thing, but it kind of puts in your mind the importance of having dialogue with your customers. Um, I have a very large client as we move on here. Uh, he told me he can't believe how engaged I am with his property. Well, he's our, one of our top five clients. I make sure I'm walking his yard once a month. Yeah. Um, things like that matter folks. So stay focused on hitting your goals for 2022. Um, I want to walk you through how we're approaching the rest of the year and staying focused. And this is kind of the tactical side of how we operate strategically here, but we set priorities through team meetings. We meet quarterly and we do that with our leadership team and we meet in town, we meet over at a local hotel, this nice little hotel that's two miles from our office. They have a real nice meeting room. We go in there for four hours, we have lunch, we're offsite. And during that meeting, we review our plan and our goals for the current year. And then we review the plan for the following year. We feel that it's very important to get offsite. It, if you do it in your office, it's easy to get distracted. It's like even just the process of driving over to this little hotel, being in a different environment kind of like turns off the, the lights in the one office and turns on the lights in the strategic office to go over there and have some new discussions. Um, in each meeting, we also review our three, five, 10 year plans and adjust them accordingly. You may sit there and say three, five, 10 years. I can hardly think past next week. You need to be thinking out there. Now, obviously we do not spend a lot of time on 10 years. We don't spend much time on five. We spend some time on three. But when you start thinking through things, you start seeing how realistic or unrealistic they are. Right now, for number one, in terms of equipment, the procurement process is unreal. We, we're going to order another one of those trucks like we showed you, and we need it for next spring. They said nine months, all right? And they're trying to find a cabin chassis right now to put that container on the back for us. So the planning cycle has become even more critical for planning. Um, we assign priorities in the leadership team meetings and they report back on updates at weekly and future meetings. And normally at each quarterly strategic planning meeting, we bring another arm of the company in and they get some insight into what we're doing and we have a discussion. Last month was sales, the, the quarter before that was operations and we're continuing to let them be involved. We want them to have a say we want to be able to hold them accountable. We want to have some conversations that are meaningful. And Vince, why don't I go on and you cut, you do the uh, part of the meeting because you're basically the person putting a lot of this together. Yeah. So as Marty said, every quarter, we kind of go off site and talk about what's happening in the business. So things that we do, we review our vision, mission, core values, and our theme for the year. So just in, in this year, 2022, we updated our vision and mission not something we're going to go into a bunch of details on today, but we felt that previously our vision and mission was too focused on the company, 
and where it was going and not enough focus on the team members that support the company. So we, as part of one of these meetings, talked about our vision and mission, and we've rehashed it to make the team more of a front and center focal of our vision and mission. We always talk about our unique value proposition. We talk about it every quarter. Yes, we talk about it every quarter because we've got to make sure we know who we are and we know what we do better than our competition, right? Marty and I, you've heard us do this talk before about Nordstrom, Target, or Walmart, three very successful companies, three very well-run companies with three decidedly different ideal clients, right? It does not matter which one you are, but you have to know which one you are so that your customer knows which one you are because your price, your service, and your quality are going to dictate which one of those three buckets you fall into. And let me tell you this, you can't be all three, okay? So doesn't mean you can only be one. You can be one and a half or maybe one and a quarter of one, but you've got to know who you are as a company. And we like to talk about that every quarter just so that we remind ourselves, so that we remind our team, so that they remind our customers. And as Marty said, something else fun that we do, we usually do this once a year. We talk about a big, hairy, audacious goal that we might be at in five years. We might be at in 10 years. What if we have five Grunder Green trucks on the road in five years? What if we have 10 Grunder Green trucks on the road in five years? What if we have 20 in 10 years? What does that look like? Is that possible? Would we want to do that? Again, Marty said it fires a lot of good brainstorming that you have. And then every year, we're certainly looking at our sales, our revenue, and our gross profit goals. Our goal every year as a team is to final is to start talking about that realistically in the third quarter for the following year, and then finalizing that in Q4 for the following year. So for our 2023 goals, we've started talking about them. We'll, we'll get even more finite with them in Q3. And by Q4, we're going to have our 2024 goals already set out. I'm sorry, by Q4, we'll have our 2023 goals already laid out for the year. We also like to look at deliverables and action items on a rolling uh, quarterly basis so that right now we're in Q2 of 2022. We kind of want to know where we're going to be four quarters from now. That's how we look at it. As Marty said, a lot of that has come in through planning of equipment and planning of people. If we know we're going to have two new sales reps at Grunder Green starting next spring. Well, we need to know that really going into Q3 and Q4 of this year to get them prepared for the selling season and then the operation season of next spring. We can't make that decision in December. We're way too late. So that's why we always try to look four quarters out and figure out, okay, four quarters from now, where do we think we're going to be? Roll that back to today. What does that mean we have to start planning for today? We have been a fan of hiring people a little bit before we need them giving them a little bit more time to train, giving them a little bit more time to understand our business, and then really setting good and high expectations for them to be performers. So we've taken that mindset on. It's really been helpful for us. So finally, as Marty said before we move on, not only because of logistics, but because of planning, you really have to know where you're going a year from now so that you can be successful when we fast forward. We could not have hit our 2022 lawn care goal if we didn't plan in 2021 to be successful in 2022. So always stay, again, about four quarters ahead, one year of where you are now versus where you're going to be. And then, Marty, I'll hit on this quickly, and we can move into questions. We're at about 3, 3.35 here Eastern time, and I want to keep us on time. But we have our quarterly meetings, right? And then we move into weekly meetings where every Monday we're talking as a group and we're talking about the priorities. The goal of that weekly meeting is not to be making huge decisions or strategic decisions. The goal is that in those quarterly meetings, we've already done that. So the Monday meetings that we run as a team become very tactical, very focused on getting the work done. And we don't go down rabbit holes about where we're going to be in five years. We should have talked about that at the quarterly meeting. So Again, we're going to meet quarterly. We're going to decide our big goals for the quarter, for the next year. And then we're going to meet every Monday as a team and talk about what we're doing that week, that month to ensure those goals are good. And then if a conversation comes up where Marty might throw in and say, hey, I think we should push and I think we should try to get another truck for Grunder Green. That might come up in a Monday meeting. We'll say, great, Marty, thanks for bringing that up. Let's make sure we put that conversation on the agenda for our quarterly meeting so that we address that in a time and place where we're strategically thinking about the business. That takes some discipline. We're not always perfect at it, but that mindset of, hey, in this weekly meeting, we're gonna focus on getting work done, focus on our priorities, and then we're gonna do some brainstorming and talk about bigger ideas in quarterly meetings. And Marty, that rhythm has been super helpful for us, and it really was not hard for us to get in a rhythm to do that. So again, be a year out, have your quarterly meetings, and use those weekly meetings to drive results. I think the other thing to mention about the power of meetings are entrepreneurs like myself are very creative people and we get ideas and we want to go talk about them right away. 
Yep. You can't do that. You got to let your people work. So these meetings perform, allow for a um, forum in which you can talk about this stuff at the proper time and not take your people out of their flow. Uh, the metrics that we look together, uh, each week we look at metrics together, square footage sold on the lawn care side, what was the revenue, production hours, callbacks, number of phone calls and leads, actuals versus budgets, actual versus last time, this time last year, marketing trackers. Um, we've got a very sophisticated industry specific piece of software called Aspire that we're using to run this. And it gives us a tremendous amount of information. Uh, the question that Vince and I have for you today, do you know your average square foot per lawn? Can we divide that into our average client and get a number that we can measure and monitor? Um, all of this kind of stuff enables you to be a good manager. And we always say here at the, good, at, at the Grow Group that good information allows managers to make good decisions. So that's, that's the big part of that. Um, let's recap the takeaways that we had here from today. Uh, number one, you need to be selling add-on services right now and going to your customer as an expert. I, I love Vince, how he positioned that as, you know, that's expected from you. And quite frankly, if you aren't, your competitors are going to do that. You, you've got to be the person that's lighting a fire under this type of a mindset. Number two, ensure, your, ensure that your quality is as you promised. Um, surveys are a great tool, but also don't be afraid to ask for feedback in the spring. Don't be afraid to talk to a client. Don't be afraid to use whatever means you're comfortable with to get with them there. And if there's problems, survey in such a way that you have time to talk to them. Uh, asking them around Thanksgiving how their lawn is when they're looking out and in many parts of the country it's gone dormant, you know, that, that's, that's kind of rough. Um, kind of hard for you to make things right as well. And then finally, uh, get some planning rhythm. Uh, the acquisition of assets to drive growth is very, very difficult right now. Um, you're going to end up with someone else's junk because you need a truck and you're going to have to buy a used one and set it up. And we're just not a proponent of that type of a situation, folks. Um, let metrics guide your business. Good managers make good decisions with good information. Um, a lot we shared with you, the, the plan of these call-in shows is to give you a tremendous amount of information in a short amount of time, let you take a break away from business. Hopefully we, we uh, ignite your thought process a little bit and make you better. And hopefully we've done that for you again today. Uh, Vince, other takeaways? And I guess we can take some questions. No, Mike, if you're ready, we've got some questions that were submitted ahead of time. And I know we got one in the chat. So why don't we get into our questions? That's great. Yeah, I picked up that one from the chat. I'll, we'll get to that in the end. Great. So, Marty, let's continue our conversation about what teams are working through this spring. So a few questions here. First one from Joshua Tree. Uh, Marty, what's the best way to set realistic expectations for cool season turf in the transition zone? How do you answer the question, it looks so good in April, what happened in July? If you know it's gonna be a problem, you gotta address it up front. If there's opportunities for other types of applications you can make to help, um, reminding them about irrigation. I know. Uh, Mike, my daughter played soccer at Auburn University, and the field that she played on was decidedly better than most of the turf on the rest of the university, and, and you could always see that. Well, there was a lot more maintenance on it, and so I guess I, I find too many, and this isn't just LCOs, it's landscapers, it's home improvement specialists. I mean, we could come up with multiple industries. You know your expertise is telling you that's going to be a problem. You got to talk about that up front. And you've got to say, hey, listen, without an irrigation system, this is where we're going to be. With this type of turf, no matter what I do, just understand when we go in the transition with temperatures, we, we may have a problem. I think what customers don't like are surprises. They're looking to you to wave your magic wand and fix everything. And when you're surprising them after you signed them up and took their money, and now you're telling them, oh, yeah, by the way, well, you should have known that. Well, that. I, I think that's where the frustration comes. Um, Mike, I know you ran a lawn care company for a long time. How did you handle that? Yeah, well, you know, I agree, Marty. You know, being proactive is always going to be the best way to do that. But just in a lot of cases, that's not always feasible. You're going to find about this after the fact. And right. whether it's whether you know anything around the basic agronomics, you know, this isn't a, this is a chance to establish yourself as the lawn care expert. But furthermore. Sometimes it's always good to bring in that third party information that you're trying to get across 
What's what's the local turf extension in your in your area? Is that Rutgers? It was or is it Penn State or Ohio State? Which one is that? They're all going to have fact sheets with their logo at the top of it that Good speak point. to just just this fact. You carry a handful of those top ten problems in your truck when this comes up. You, not only are you teaching them about it, but hey, here's what Rutgers says about uh, this kind of turf and this kind of area, that kind of thing. I would get those questions the the you know the uh, other the other way around. Why does my zoysia lawn look look yellow in May? Well, because it's warm season turf, you know, and it's that kind of question. But there's different ways that you can kind of speak to that. Bringing that third party in, that expert, not only helps with your credibility, it also helps solidify that to help the uh, the customer. And I, I I think what both of us are saying here is that there is some science involved. I mean, this mm-hmm. isn't just you know there is some proof and. Again, like we talked about about 20 minutes ago, the more education and information you can share to, to, to prove your point, uh, what, are, what are money managers doing right now? They're producing an incredible amount of information out about how this resembles a particular year and why we could expect this and that. You know, the past does predict the future to a point, but with, with turf where science is involved, it makes a lot of sense to do that. Uh, I, I love what you said, Mike. Thank you. Sure. So our next question is from Charlotte, North Carolina at G&G. They ask, what are the top three most important questions to ask a prospective customer first? And then secondly, what about from a quality control perspective as well? Yeah, that's a lot. Um, I will tell you that the things that we ask when we screen potential clients, they change with with what the market is dictating. Right now, one of the first things we're asking is, what's your time frame? If someone calls you and says, my lawn looks awful, we were in Dayton, Ohio, my lawn looks awful, Um, I'm having a wedding here um, in June, I need you to reseed it. Time out. You're giving me three weeks to have your lawn look good for a wedding, I can't do it. We're going to have to strip it and sod it. I know I can't afford sod. Ma'am, I can't help you. So the first one is, you know, what are they doing? What's the time frame? The other question I like to ask, and we're using this as we develop scripts for Grunder Green, is tell us about your experience in the past with your professional lawn care company. What did you like and not like? Mm -hmm. That is a great question because you get so many things. You might get an answer. I liked them. They just, they didn't communicate well. And then you drive by the lawn and you're like, oh my gosh wait till they see what we can do with the lawn, but they were upset that they didn't communicate well. We know we can hit this. It's always good to know what your customer's hot buttons are. Um, I remember when my wife and I built our house, the builder, um, I learned so much from him. I didn't realize what kind of a salesman he was until we started working with him. And he asked what was important to us. And and did we want to live in this house for 10 years or did we want to, you know, did we want to sell it or what did we want to do? And he saved us a tremendous amount of money by asking more questions about what we liked and didn't like. And I think the same thing goes for a prospective client. Now, it's difficult when you're on the phone with a transactional nature of a lawn care, but I would have some conversations. Tell us about your experience in the past. What are you after? Mm-hmm. And, and then I think the last question becomes is, you know, and, and I guess it could be the first question, but why did you why did you choose to call us? What what prompted this um, this desire to want to call us? And if you hear, well, we've had three different lawn care companies last year; they all killed my lawn. I mean, again, that is telling you, like, whoa, 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 hold on, I am going to really have to be careful here. Versus mm-hmm. if someone says, "You do Mike Sisti's lawn; his lawn looks awesome. I travel a lot." He told me you all will take care of me. I trust you. Just come out and give me a quote. That's a whole other different scenario. So Mm -hmm. those are those are the things that I would say. Vince, anything you want to add there? No, Marty, you hit a couple that I would say. What's your experience been? Maybe they've had a professional lawn care uh, company work with them in the past. Maybe they haven't. Maybe they tried to do it on their own and they're at Home Depot trying to figure out, you know, what to do. I think that's a great point. And then, yeah, I always like asking, why'd you call us, right? Maybe you're getting a little insight into what they perceive you to be versus what you actually are. And Mike, if you got anything you want to add, go for it. But I think Marty, you nailed it. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, it's along the same lines. And whether this is an inbound call or an outbound call, we've always drilled it down to really one question. And that's, can I ask, what did you do for the lawn last year? Because it's going to be one, it's going to be one of two answers. They either did it themselves, which could right. be could be nothing, nothing in their eyes, or one <laughs> bag of the four step program, or it could mean they had a professional service. Now they had a professional service. I even take that down, you know, one more and ask, you know, have you ever used a professional service before if they say they've done it themselves? Because what are you trying to do? You're 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 probing those questions. You want to uncover what the real need is, and sometimes it's a few questions in. Then you know how to match your features and benefits and customize your your program to what their need is. Yeah. So. And then I, I think you had, what was the question about quality control? And then it was, you know, once you bring a customer on, they what what types of questions would you ask from a quality control perspective? You know, that one's a little bit of a stump. Um, I think what we do more and what we're setting up as, as we get this going that I, I haven't seen other lawn care companies do is we know communication is a hot button. Um, we know that people with pets want to bring their dogs in. We know that um, there is always a ton of education that we can do. Um, we've got it set up now with our software program. They get an email notification of when we're coming and they get an email notification when we're done saying what we've done. And then of course we do our posting, which is required. But I think on the quality control side, as far as lawn care goes, telling them that how you're set up, that if you have any questions, call us. Our, our you know, this is the, the protocol we go through. You can always go on our portal. You can submit your, your question. You can attach pictures if you'd like. When our techs are on site, we want them knocking on the door and saying hello and telling them what they're there to do. Yes, that does slow them down some, but people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And in lawn care, no matter how much education you do, they're still going to blame you when they see something brown in the yard. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is an honest, true story. I had a wonderful client telling me that the brown spots in his yard were not from his four dogs. He, he was convinced it wasn't his four dogs. I had to get a soil test to tell him it was dog urine to prove that that's what was going on. So there just becomes a lot there. And you have to understand as the owner, the leaders of your companies, the, the burden of proof is on you. And, and you've got to be as proactive as you possibly can on this. Don't wait for someone to talk about something that you think they might be going for. I would encourage you to bring it up in your education or your conversations ahead of time. So Marty, this question comes from Andrews in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Uh, how do we increase tech-driven sales? So we just got back from one of our peer group meetings where we had some conversations with various lawn care uh, owners of lawn care companies talking about that. Um, certainly incentivizing them. Um, and Vince, maybe you can comment on some of the other things that you've seen, but, but I think incentivizing them makes a lot of sense, but there's a fine line there, okay? Um, when I had an HVAC company that seemed to be doing a good job, every time they came to my house, I needed a capacitor. So the last time they replaced the capacitor, I took it to my friend who's got an HVAC company. I didn't use them. I said, tell me if this thing's bad. He said, no. So we want to make sure we're, we're buttoning down what we're selling on and, and how we're doing that. Vince, do you have anything to add on that one? Ensuring techs are educated on why it's important that while we're there, we're explaining and showing how we can add value. I think that's a big part of it, too, is that you're not just there to do your job and walk off. You're there to ensure total quality of the property. So, again, incentives are a clear number one. And then number two, no different than educating clients, educating our techs on, hey, do you realize what it costs for us to park a truck, get it there, pull over, stop and make a stop. We need to make those stops and maximize those as best we can. If you're there on the property, you're the expert. So we're relying on you to be eyes and ears. But I think that's all I'd want to add, Marty. Yeah. And that's critically important to have techs that care, that know how to look. You know, if you don't do the first treatment in the spring, right, you're going to have a lot of problems later. So quality needs to be up there. I mean, um, lawn care, lawn care can be simple, but it can be, you can make it hard on yourself. If, if you don't slow down and do some things right up front. Agreed. So Marty, our next question comes from Go Green Lawn and Pest. And if we're not doing add-ons right now, which do you feel we should do first? And which do you think are the most profitable? They're, the numbers we see on perimeter pest control and plant health care, they're, they're unreal. Um, the plant health care can be somewhat 
complicated because we have a Hort background. So that, that comes natural to me. Like I know Hort better than I do lawn care at this point. I'm learning lawn care. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an idiot when it comes to lawn care. I know what I'm doing, but do I know what Mike Sisti knows? No, I do not. Mike's helping us in that department and so are his professionals, just like they're there to help you. I would say perimeter pest control. I would say certainly overseeding and aeration makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there's other products that you can use on the lawn. Mike, you may be able to provide a little more insight, but I think perimeter pest control would be one I would be looking for. And then I would say the aeration and overseeding for sure. Yeah. Um, again, we're, we're trying to get that truck in front of that house to do more things. Um, I don't think it's that difficult to add on plant health care. You can get some help there in, in making that an easy add on for yourself. Mike, what do you see out there? I think, you know, some of it comes down to what makes the most sense for the customer. So when you look at then the, the, the first probably natural fit is aeration or a combination of aeration and seeding, just because the cultural benefits of, of what it can do for the lawn. Uh, so, and then there are ways that can be some, you know, time, time consuming and labor intensive, but, you know, aerators have come a long way from what they were, you know, 20, 25 years ago. And the aerators that are out there now really make them less uh, intensive on the operator, which helps you get more square footage done in the day. Amen. So really, you know, one of the statements I used to ingrain, and we used to literally had it taped up in the bathroom and in the hallways and in the sales room, and it was core aeration is the healthiest thing you could do for the lawn all year besides keeping it fed. Because, and, and just know that. Right. And, and that's the truth. And then again, going back to my point on Rutgers and Penn State, they're going to tell you the same kind of things in terms of how beneficial air flying the lawn is. The seating comes along for the ride in terms of, you got to, again, you have to explain how that's going to work. Seed doesn't grow without water and water doesn't come without your help, Mr. Customer. But, you know, that's part of the education process. So really start to think of what does your customer need first? Then you can kind of work that back into the profitability of it because perimeter pest is a great one too. Flea and tick, all those ones are in there that will help provide some great margins for you. But if you got to look for a place to start first, look at what's going to help improve your customer retention. And that's going to be a healthier looking lawn and aeration and seeding as a vehicle along with your regular yeah. program that's going to help get you there. You just made me think of something that I've neglected to mention. The role playing on how we do this stuff becomes very, very important with your team. Remember, most of these techs are folks that like working outside. They're, they're not taking the job because they like sales or they maybe they don't. They certainly many of them do not understand sales. So role playing and making it as realistic with your team as you possibly can. is probably something I should have message uh, mm -hmm. mentioned. Great. So we've got four more questions to go. Let's see if we can get all these in in time. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead, Meyer. That's fine. Yep. All right. Next question here. Do you have any recommendations for lawn care software? I mean, I'm a little jaded here. To me, there's, you know, we run Aspire, which is the industry specific software. We're making our lawn care work with that. Aspire was recently acquired by Service Titan, and we think they're going to get better and better there. The only other one I think you should consider, which I hear terrific things about, is Real Breed. Mm -hmm. I don't know of others, Mike. I, I'm not, I, I don't have that much insight, but, but Vince, our clients, our most successful clients in lawn care are running real green. We're going to see what we can do with Aspire because I believe that, that they will be able to come through. And right now with Grunder, we want to run one platform. We don't want to run two. I don't mm -hmm. know Vince, if you can add anything there. No, nothing to add. I think real green, Marty, is the only one that I would recommend. Yeah. I know people are successful with. So that's, and I've never heard anything bad about real green. I, from yeah. what I understand, it's a terrific program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So next question, Marty comes from scenic source. It uh, states, my sales efforts feel unbalanced. Do you have any advice for getting a steadier flow of work? Yeah, you've got to match your demand for capacity. Um, you know, timing wise, we're running out of a window here for aeration and seeding right now. You know when that is. That's in Ohio. That's in August and early September. Um, so you've got to match it when you can do it. Um, when are mosquitoes out? You should almost be going through your calendar and you should be gritting out laying out your um, agronomy calendar, your horticultural calendar, the family calendar, all those calendars over one another and see which buckets you can put them in. Um, spraying a lawn for mosquitoes in, in October and November 
I don't believe that makes sense. Okay, right now is when people are out in their lawn and they're worried about that. So you've got to plan ahead of time to get to there. So I think it's more of looking at like the insect life cycle, the weather life cycle, all those factors that play into what makes a lawn green and then putting them into buckets into when you can do them. So Marty from uh, CN, CNS from Ohio asks, how do you know when to stop upselling so you can keep your schedule, don't oversell for the year? Sometimes they tend to upsell and stop upselling rather because they're afraid of running out of time and not being able to get to everything in time. Yeah, I understand that. One of the things I have learned here, and Vince can maybe chime in. Uh, is that the last question? Uh, there's one more from the chat. Okay. Um, it's an hours thing. It's really a math equation. All right. You know, one of the cool things about the lawn care business is the square foot production numbers are right on. All right. You are you can figure out how long it's going to take to aerate a three acre lawn with an aerator. You can do the math. If you're going to double aerate it, you got it. You got to know what to do. So I think it's a math equation and it becomes it's incumbent upon you to be extremely organized with your time and knowing things. And knowing that there's so many hours in a day and you may get rain or you may not be able to do something. So that means somebody's going to have to work a Saturday or a Sunday to catch up. It's about being more planned with your labor budget, I think, than anything else. Yeah. And I, I would just add briefly to Marty and Mike that and I think Carrie asked this or Jill, so I can give them a quick answer. But I would never shut off sales. I think once you shut off sales or shut off the idea of sales, it does create a weird conversation and consequence as a part of just shutting it off. So it's more about, as Marty said, we've got to be organized with our hours. We might have to work more. Our team might be doing more overtime. Me as an owner might be stepping in and doing more. But the minute you tell everyone, hey, we're sold out or, hey, we can't do that or, hey, we could do this, but our schedule's full, is the minute that, again, it just it has a little bit of a shift in the language that you have and the way the customers of the team sees it. So I would find a way to never say no to a sale to someone who is willing to buy what you want. And Marty, our last question comes from Cody in the chat who asks, what digital marketing tactics seem to work the best in today's market? You know, I don't know that I'm the greatest person to, to answer that. Um, we're, we're learning more and more about that. Um, we're doing a lot of targeted ads. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think for the transactional nature of what lawn care companies do, having a presence on Facebook where the mothers are, are there talking and there's various neighborhood groups I think not having a presence there is a big mistake. I, I, I yep. think you have to be. I'll be more fully equipped to answer that question because we are right in the middle of planning all that. And we're gathering best practices from the industry and companies. Um, I love the question. I don't think I have the, the greatest answer for that right now. But I think that speaks to the power of getting together in peer groups. That mm -hmm. speaks to joining for a session like this. Um, that speaks to talking to your FMC rep. Uh, good mm -hmm. Lord, how many successful lawn care companies do they work with? Mike right here, every, every month when we have our talks with Mike, I learn more about what he did. I, I, I had a wonderful chance to play golf with Mike a couple months ago. We talked about all kinds of things. So mm -hmm. um, I think the fact that you're asking the question is great. I think you should have a social media presence. And I think you should continue to go to events and read and get out on mm -hmm. the internet and find out what other companies are doing. You know, and, and to that point, Marty, you know, there's there's no one digital marketing effort that's your silver bullet that's going to do every, everything. Right. And just, just from a sheer marketing perspective, I really don't see that changing. So, right. you know, but really what you want to, what you would do want to ask. So, yes, you'd be on a variety of different platforms. So whether that's your e-blast or whether that's going you know, to be on social or how you're going to push that out there digitally, but really is, you know, What's the point of what's the point of the ad that you're putting together? You know, is it concise? Do you have a call to action? If it's too long, it's not going to get read. So you really want to think in terms of those. You know, the, that customer probably has about four seconds before they click off that and they're on to the next one. So you're going to want to get what you're trying to get across very quickly and a very obvious call to answer, call to action rather that draws them in, which should be the goal of anything that you put up from a social or digital standpoint. Amen. Well said. Great, Mike. That's great information. Thank you. 
All right, we are right at four o'clock. As always, you'll get a copy of this recording. It will live on the True Champion site. Thank you to Mike and the FMC team for having Marty and I join for this May experience. Marty, thank you for the expertise. Of course. Thank you everybody for joining us. Again, look for eBlast coming out. We'll be back with you July for our next call in session. So Mike, Marty and FMC team, thank you very much for the support. Everybody go have a great rest of their May. Thank you. Hope we helped you. Have a great day, everyone. Yeah.